This is not good. Oh, I don't need this right now. I'm even late. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? <sighs> no. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? There are two people stuck on an escalator, and we need help. Now, will somebody please do something? Help! <laughs> I do not believe this. You have got to be kidding me. I'm gonna cry. There is just, there's nothing else for us to do. Well, did you enjoy that video? Yeah, I'm sure you got a good laugh over it. And I'm sure it might make you think twice the next time you go to use an escalator. I certainly hope that this perilous situation never happens to you. Of course, I say that in jest because you know what? These two individuals could have very easily alleviated their situation by doing what? That's right, by simply taking some steps forward. But instead, they chose to remain stuck. You know, we can look at that situation and say, man, that was just silly. But you know what's not so silly? Is that we as Christians can kind of do the same thing that those two individuals did on that escalator. And that is, we can choose to remain stuck in spiritual immaturity. That was the case for some followers of Jesus that the author of Hebrews is addressing in Hebrews chapter 5. He wanted to take them to deeper knowledge about Jesus Christ, but they were incapable of doing so because they had not yet mastered the basics. You know, I've been a, a coach of youth sports here in Forks Township for several years. And, you know, every year, whether it's with baseball or soccer, there's always, you know, one or two or maybe a few kids on the team who aren't able to go beyond the basics because they have not yet mastered the basics. So then, you know, coaches such as myself need to come alongside of them to help them master those basics so that they can move on to other skills. And so that's the situation here in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. And so if you have a copy of God's Word, why don't you turn there? Whether you're hard, it's a hard copy or digital, go ahead and turn there. You can also follow along on the screen in front of you. So here's what it says, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. We have a great deal to say about this, and it is difficult to explain since you have become too lazy to understand. Although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the basic principles of God's revelation again. You need milk, not solid food. Now everyone who lives on milk is inexperienced with the message about righteousness because he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose senses have been trained to distinguish between good and evil. Now, as you have followed along, uh, along in this passage, I'm not sure if you quite caught it, but there's a, a clear contrast between the stuck and the unstuck. That is the spiritually immature and the mature. Can you see it? Well, I'm going to help you out here, and I'm, I provided a, a, a chart for you 
which contrasts the stuck and the unstuck. So first of all, we see a difference in terms of their mental state. The stuck are sluggish, according to verse 11, and I think this is implied. Conversely, the unstuck have an enthusiasm. They're, they're eager to hear. When it comes to the diet of these two groups, those who are stuck have a diet of milk in verse 12, whereas the mature, those who are unstuck, have a diet of solid food. Also with experience, it says that those who are stuck are, are inexperienced with the word of God, with the oracles of God. Whereas those who are unstuck and mature are experienced. And then finally is in the area of skill and discernment. Those who are stuck are unskilled. They, they should be at a place where they're able to articulate the basic message of the gospel and share that with others but they're unable to do so. They're also lacking discernment, which is implied by verse 14. Now, conversely, those who are unstuck, those who are mature, they're able to teach. And that doesn't mean that they're able to teach a class in terms of they have the spiritual gift of teaching, but rather, as I've mentioned, they are able to articulate on a basic level, what the Bible is about, what Christianity is all about to others. And they're also characterized by a level of discernment, as verse 14 says, that solid food is for the mature, for those whose senses have been trained to distinguish between good and evil. So as you consider this list, you consider the characteristics of the skilled and the unskilled, the mature and immature. Where do you think you fall? If you would assess yourself, where do you think you fall? Would you consider yourself one who's stuck, one who's spiritually immature, or one who's unstuck, who's advancing and developing in the Christian life? Maybe you're somewhere right in the middle. Now, if you are stuck this morning, you, you might be wondering, you know, how in the world did I get here? You know, why am I stuck? You know, I can compare that to maybe uh, someone who has been on a quest to lose weight and maybe they've been eating right, maybe they've been exercising and initially they lost all this weight. But now they're at a place where that scale isn't, doesn't seem to be budging anymore and they're stuck. And so what they might do is make some tweaks to their exercise routine. They might make a tweak to their diet so that they get unstuck. And that can be true of our, of our walk with God too. Sometimes we get stuck just because we need to change up our routine. So, you know, for example, uh, for many years, I read through the Bible in, in a year. And, you know, after doing that for so long, I just recognized, you know, I, I need to change things up. So this year, I'm choosing to slow it down and I'm going to do a two-year Bible reading plan because that's what I need for myself right now in this season of life. But here in Hebrews, the, the lack of growth, the lack of maturity among these believers isn't because they were stuck in a stale routine and they just need to make a few tweaks. They're actually stuck because they're spiritually sluggish. They're spiritually sluggish. That's what it says in verse 11, where he says, we have a great deal to say about this and it is difficult to explain since you have become too lazy to understand. That's really the cause of their spiritual immaturity. Now, you might be using a, a different translation, such as the New, New International Version or the King James Version, where they translate it as dull of hearing. The New American Standard translate this word as poor listeners. When you look at the Greek, it literally says sluggish of hearing. 
And so the author isn't scolding them for, you know, nodding off during his message. And hey, if you're nodding off now, wake up, and pay attention. So it's not because they're just growing tired and they need to wake up. The author is actually chastising them for not giving the message the attention it deserves. And that's kind of a theme in, in Hebrews. In, in Hebrews 2, verse 1, he emphasizes the importance of paying attention to the gospel. He says this, For this reason we must pay attention all the more to what we have heard, so that we will not drift away. The, the danger here is that you know we can initially respond to the message of the gospel with with great enthusiasm and we're excited and, and, and we're growing, we're excited about our new life in Christ. But if we fail to make that a priority, if we fail to give that proper attention, it's easy to settle and get stuck. Especially the longer that we're a Christian, it's easy to settle and get stuck and just kind of say, I'm good where I'm at. You know, this is a good place. I really don't need to advance. Well, there's, there's a danger in that, that we would start to drift away. And that's the last thing we want to see happen to us. That's the last thing Jesus wants to see happen to us. And so the cause of one's spiritual immaturity here, according to Hebrews, is the fact that we are just dull to hear. We, we, we kind of don't want to pay attention anymore. And so I, I hope you understand here that the reason for their spiritual immaturity here in Hebrews 5 isn't because of a lack of intellect. That's kind of how I understood this passage before, that he was basically chastising the believers because they, they just weren't applying themselves and they just needed to exercise their minds a little bit more. But I want you to understand here the reason for their spiritual, their spiritual immaturity, it isn't a matter of intellect, it's really a matter of obedience. We can get stuck when we fail to work out the deeper, deeper implications of the gospel for our lives. It's kind of like a child who refuses to grow up. You know, as a parent of four kids, I like to take my kids to Red Robin. They really like it. You know, I like their burgers. And so it's a good place for all of us. And usually when we go, my kids order off the kid menu. So imagine if an adult, a grown adult, would always order off the kids menu at Red Robin. You might stand back and go, what's wrong with them? You know, they need to grow up. Well, here's a question for us as followers of Jesus. Are we still eating off the kids menu? Or are we eating off the menu for adults? Now, the good news is if you recognize me, I'm still eating off the kid menu. The good news is, is that you don't have to remain stuck in spiritual immaturity. At some point, you can order off the adult menu. So I wanna encourage you today, if you are in that place where you're stuck, where you realize you're spiritually immature, you can get unstuck. But the cure might not be what you think it is. So you may realize, you know what, I'm spiritually immature, my diet is milk. What I really need to do is start eating that solid food. You know, it reminds me of when my, my kids were babies and toddlers and they're in the high chair and they're eating and they're still eating like the soft baby food and they might look at me or Tori where we're eating meat and they'll go some some you know more more they they wanted to eat what we have and that's a good thing that's a good desire and and i would say if you're spiritually immature today and you desire that solid food that's a good thing that's a great thing because the desire is there but but here's what you need to do if you want to get unstuck the cure for the Christian to get unstuck is to drink milk. That's what Hebrews 5.12c says. What does he say it says is the cure? You need milk, not solid food. The cure for getting unstuck 
is to go back to the basics and master them. You know, I've already mentioned about my, my experience with coaching. I noticed that, you know, struggles with, with youth athletes at the rec level is, is um, with the basic, basics. So, you know, I've noticed sometimes in soccer, kids struggle to pass the ball. They struggle to use the inside of their foot to pass. And whereas some kids struggle to kick for power, they realize if you want to kick for power in soccer, you got to kick basically off the laces of the cleat for power. And some kids struggle with that. And so as coaches, we try to help them to master those basics. Likewise, to get unstuck from spiritual immaturity, we need to go back to the basics so that we can move into maturity. After all, that is the goal. And, and that's what Hebrews 6, 1 says that, therefore, let us leave the elementary truths, the elementary teaching about Christ, and go on to maturity. The goal is that we grow. The goal is that we mature in the Christian life, not that we remain as we are. Now, the rest of that verse, Hebrews 6, 6 2, goes on to explain what some of those basics are. Verses 2 to 3 go on to explain that some of those basics are about the gospel, about repentance, about faith, about the resurrection of Jesus, and about the eternal judgment. Now, here what I, what I don't want you to lose sight of in this, in this verse is that when it says that, that we leave them, it doesn't mean that, that we don't have any use for them anymore. It doesn't mean that we forget those basic teachings but rather that we build on those basics and we advance to maturity as we depend upon God. And so if you realize today that as a follower of Jesus, you need to go back to the basics or you just need to brush up on the basics or maybe get a better grasp of the basics, then I have a giveaway for you. Yes, I have a giveaway. I have five copies of this book, by Wayne Grudem, 20 Christian Beliefs Every Christian Should Know. And they're basic beliefs like what is the Bible, what is the Trinity, what is salvation. This book is a great summary of the basics. And reading this book will help you master the basics. So I have five copies to give away. So if you're watching this on Facebook Live or on YouTube, simply leave a comment that you would like to receive one of these copies. Maybe leave an email address so that I can contact you or you can email me at tim at forkscommunitychurch.org. So make sure that you get this. As I said, I have five copies to give away. This is a tool to help you master the basics. Because here's the deal, Jesus doesn't want us to settle where we are. Jesus desires that we keep moving towards Christ's likeness, that we advance in maturity. Forks Community Church doesn't want to be a church that simply says, eh, we're good where we are. No, we want to be a church that presses on towards greater maturity in Jesus Christ. Jesus wants that for us, and he wants that for you and me. So here's your challenge for this week, that you become mature or grow in maturity by training your spiritual taste buds. Now that's based off Hebrews 5.14, where he talks about the mature are those who are able to discern between good and evil. I don't know if you know this, but we can actually reprogram our taste buds. You know, there's research out there that, that shows that we can train our taste buds to like food that we might not have liked maybe years ago. I know as a child, I didn't like certain foods. As a child, I didn't really like broccoli, but today I really like broccoli. In fact, I love oven roasted broccoli. Mm, it's so good. Now, you know, reading that, that study about reprogramming our taste buds made me think of a, of a time in culinary school. If you don't know this about me, but my first career was a, was a chef, and uh, I went to culinary school to train to be a chef. And, in, you know, we had all sorts of classes to train us in cooking skills. 
But one of the other things that was undergoing training while we were in culinary school was our taste buds. We were kind of reprogramming our taste buds. And so I remember a time when I had American regional cuisine and I think we were doing some Tex-Mex cooking and one of the dishes called for cilantro. And I remember myself and some of the other students who have actually tasted cilantro for the first time. Initially, we thought it tasted like soap. Yeah, we thought, oh, this tastes horrible. It tasted like soap. Well, today, I don't think cilantro tastes like soap. In fact, I really love the flavor of cilantro, so much so that I'll just pull leaves off the bunch and put them right in my mouth and eat it because I love the taste of cilantro. Well, what does that story illustrate? It illustrates that we can reprogram our physical taste buds. And here's the point, that is true spiritually as well. We can re reprogram our taste for the Word of God too. God wants us to refine our taste so that we can say with the psalmist in Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, I remember being at that place where I didn't really have an appetite or a taste for God's word. But you know what happened? As I got into it, I reprogrammed my taste for God's word and I loved it and I wanted to get into it more because I saw the effect it was having upon my life. I saw how it was blessing my relationship with God and there was intimacy there as I grew in my personal relationship with him. And I, I want that for you. And I want to help you do that. And so there's, there's just two basic steps to help you to do that, to reprogram your taste for the Word of God. Num number one is to dig into the Word. Now, I'm not telling you to dig into the Word and, and read a whole book in one sitting. If you want to do that, I don't want to hold you back. But for most people, that's probably not the smartest first step. But maybe you want to read a chapter a day. Or maybe you just want to say, you know, I want to like to memorize a verse a week. That's a great idea as well. But we really have no excuse to not dig into the Word today. There are so many tools, digital tools and Bible reading apps. One of my favorites is YouVersion. In fact, that's in the description of this video from Bible.com. That's a free app you can get if you have an Android phone or an, an Apple phone. You can download that for free, and they have all kinds of reading plans to help you dig into the Word. So that's the first step, to dig into the Word. The second step is prayer, that you would ask the Lord to help you develop a taste for His Word and grow in your love for it. You know, in Hebrews uh, 6.3, it, it ends that portion about advancing in the maturity about if God permits. And I think what he's saying there is, hey, our growth still is dependent upon God. And that's where prayer comes into play. That yes, we need to come and dig into the word, but we also need to be dependent upon God and his Holy Spirit to help us understand that word. And we can ask God to give us a hunger and thirst for righteousness so that we can say, ah, I've tasted the Lord and it is good. So wherever you are today on this continuum of maturity, I hope you understand that the aim of this message wasn't to beat you up. It wasn't to make you feel bad about yourself. And maybe there is a certain level of conviction this morning where you recognize, you know what? I've kind of wasted some time here. I've been stuck in the spiritual immaturity because of my decision to, to stay there. Well, today, God has given you the opportunity to turn from that, to get unstuck, and to chart a new course to maturity. So as your pastor, I'm here to help you do that. I want to come alongside of you. I want to encourage you, and I want to cheer you on. And I want to help you get unstuck because the more of us that are advancing to maturity, the more of us that are getting unstuck, the healthier church we will be and the more vibrant our witness will be for Jesus. So if you need help today, ask for help so that I can help you move towards maturity in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for this message. 
It's a challenging one from your word, but Lord, we do need to be challenged. Maybe some today here are convicted as a result of this message, Lord. May they receive that conviction as a gift from your Holy Spirit who's urging them on and prompting them to get unstuck and to advance in, in maturity. Lord, I pray that each one of us would take this to heart this morning. And if we're already growing and we're unstuck, Lord, this message will encourage us to keep going, to keep fighting that good fight of faith. For those, Lord, who have been stuck, I pray that this will encourage them to get moving. And Lord, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that Forks Community Church would never become a church that just settles for where we are. But we would be a church that has an increasing love for Jesus, who hears the shepherd's voice through his word and follows you and always makes spiritual maturity a priority in our lives. Use us, Lord, we pray. Help us to advance in maturity that we would grow to be more and more like Jesus. For your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.